Hi guys, in the last lesson we looked at how we could scale our tasks using an ECS service with auto scaling. So with the service auto scaling, we attached an auto scaling configuration to our ECS service and it used the application auto scaling service to then add tasks to our ECS service. Now that's specific to the ECS service. So it's looking at what is the utilization of the tasks within that service and then adding tasks when a certain metric is exceeded. Now, as I mentioned, a limitation of that is you might have multiple services or tasks that are running outside of services on your container instances. So what you need to do is understand the overall utilization of your container instance and then add new container instances as and when you need to. And that's where cluster auto scaling can help. So with cluster auto scaling, a metric gets reported that the target capacity is over a certain value. Now this metric is different to the metric that we looked at in the last section or in the last lesson. This uses what's called a capacity provider reservation. And that metric measures the total percentage of cluster resources needed by all ECS workloads in the cluster. So regardless of whether they're in the same ECS service or whether they're tasks in a different service or just running manually. So when an alarm is triggered, auto scaling gets notified by CloudWatch and a new container instance can be launched and registered into the cluster. Cluster auto scaling uses a new ECS resource called a capacity provider. And a capacity provider can be associated with an EC2 auto scaling group. When you associate the ECS capacity provider with the auto scaling group and then add it to the ECS cluster, the cluster can then scale your ASG automatically by using a couple of new features. So that's managed scaling with an automatically created scaling policy on your ASG and the new metric that I mentioned before called the capacity provider reservation. And the scaling policy can then use that and it can also use managed instance termination protection which enables container aware termination of instances in the ASG when a scaling happens. So it knows if there's containers running on that particular instance. So let's head over to the console and see how we can configure cluster auto scaling. So I'm in the console and what I've done is I've scaled back my cluster so that I actually have just two ECS instances and under services I've got a desired tasks of two and two are running. And we know that with our instances that we're using the T2 micros, we can only have one task per instance because we've got 512 meg of RAM allocated to each task. And that's reaching a capacity on the ECS instances. So let's see what happens if we go in to our service. And what I want to do is increase the number of tasks to eight. And we need to go forwards and I need to specify that the maximum can be eight as well, or let's put it to 10 and click on next and update service. So back in the service, you know, if we go into tasks now, you can probably imagine what's going to happen where we're not actually going to see any new tasks running. And if we go back up to our cluster level and go to ECS instances, we can see that we have two instances. There are no more that are going to be provisioned and we don't have enough memory. We're just under the amount of memory we need to run a, at least two additional tasks. And we've asked for eight, so there's no way they're gonna fit on these two container instances. So there's a couple of things we could do now. We know that this container or this cluster was created using an auto scaling group. So we could come back here, and this is the auto scaling group that we created through the command line a couple of labs ago. And we could go into here, edit the auto scaling group and actually increase the amount of instances we want to run. But that's a manual process. We can specify a policy based on utilization, but what we want to do is actually go in and configure it through ECS so that it's integrated with the ECS service. So to do that, we use a capacity provider. Now I'm gonna create a new auto scaling group for this. So let's go back. I'm gonna create an auto scaling group I'm going to choose the same launch configuration that has the correct AMI ID that was used for our existing auto scaling group. I'm going to call this capacity provider ASG. And let's start with two instances here. And I'm going to choose the same VPC 
that was created by CloudFormation as part of the cluster we created a couple of labs ago. So let's go forwards. We're not going to configure a scaling policy and let's just go to through to review and create auto scaling group. And I'm going to close this and actually let's go in and what I want to do is I just want to increase the maximum here to four and click on save. So now let's go back to ECS. We're going to create a capacity provider. We're going to call this my capacity provider EC2. Under auto scaling group, we can see the auto scaling group we just created. We're going to set managed scaling and we're going to specify 50% because remember that we're just under the amount that we need to run additional tasks on each instance. So 50% is a good value that will push the auto scaling group to add an additional instance as we're just slightly over 50% at the moment. I'm going to disable manage termination protection and choose create. So let's go back to our cluster now that's been created and we can see that we have a current size and a desired size of two and a max size of four. And if we head over to instances, we can see straight away that two additional instances have been launched. And those are the ones that we specified as part of the creation of the auto scaling group. And what I'm hoping to see soon is because we've asked for eight tasks, which would actually require eight instances, and we have a maximum instances in our ASG of four. So what I should see is at least four instances should come up. And we've got two, so that's the initial starting point for the ASG. So what we're waiting for now is for the CloudWatch alarm to actually send a notification to the ASG to say that we need two more instances. So let's just go over to capacity providers and I've left it a few minutes and I can see now that my desired size has just changed from two to four. So the CloudWatch alarm has notified the ASG that it needs to add more container instances and it's increased the desired size up to the max size, which is four. So we should now have two more container instances that are being launched. So let's head over to ECS, click on refresh, and we've still only got four. So I'll give it a couple of minutes and I expect we'll then see two more in this list. So that took a few minutes, but now we do have all of our instances running. So we now have six instances and each of those is running one ECS task. So just heading back over to the diagram, what's happened is we have our ECS container instances reporting the capacity provider reservation metric to CloudWatch. And it's notified in this case that the utilization of the container instance was over 50%. And CloudWatch has then triggered the auto scaling group to create another ECS container instance. And then when that happens, there's more capacity in the cluster. So the ECS service is able to launch additional tasks. So that's it for this lab. I hope you enjoyed that. All we need to do now is just remove our cluster. And in terms of cleaning up, you'll want to try and manually delete a few resources before you go and run the ECS CLI command. So we created the cluster using the ECS CLI. So I'm going to show you a couple of commands you can use to bring it back down again. But because we modified it, you might want to delete these first. Otherwise, the resources that have been created are going to be different to the CloudFormation stack template. So firstly, delete your ECS service, stop any other ECS tasks you have running, deactivate the capacity provider, and then delete the manually created ASG. So not the one that was created by CloudFormation, but the one we created ourselves. You can then run these two commands. So the first one removes the compose service and the second one brings down the cluster. Once you've run those, assuming they run successfully, you'll still want to check these few things. And if they don't run successfully, you definitely need to go and check these. So make sure your ASG is gone. Make sure your EC2 instances have been brought down and go into CloudFormation and have a look at the stack and make sure it's deleted successfully. And if not, then just go in and manually delete any resources that it's left behind.